So the next one, right? We talked about content now stereoisomers. Uh, let me just erase all of this. Now, of course, guys, if you wanna, um, I'm just going over the concepts in order for you to, you know, completely understand this. I would highly recommend you gotta, you have to do practice problems. Organic chemistry, it's all about, you know, it's like learning a language. You just gotta keep practicing it. Well, not a language, but you know, just keep practicing it and do more exam I and mean, do more problems, and then eventually you'll get the hang of it. Um, next is stereoisomers. Stereoisomers. So stereoisomers, like I said, it's a umbrella category, and it divides into into two, right? Enantiomers and um, diastereomers. And this goes back to my what do you call it? The that example that I um, that big flow chart that I drew for you guys at the beginning. Um, so stereoisomers, we have same connectivity just like before. I'm just gonna abbreviate this. Same connectivity, um, but we have different the the differences in spatial arrangements of our substituents or our atoms you can say so the differences in differ by spatial arrangement of atoms now what the hell does that mean um let me i'll show you guys and when I say spatial arrangement atoms, usually around the chiral center, usually around a chiral center. Now, again, um, if you guys are not understanding what a chiral center is or what chirality is, please, um, uh, like I said, you need to review that stuff before understanding this video. So let me give you guys some examples, and this will make sense. Let's say we have. We have a molecule, let's see, so we have something like this, two, two molecules, right? Okay, that's terrible drawing. And right over here we have, a, say, a methyl group, right? You know, make that a wedge. And then we have a bromine. Uh, terrible. So we have a Br. And then the same molecule we have methyl group over here and then a Br over here. Right? So this is the chiral center on both of them. Right? But the difference you can see how the atoms they're arranged. Right? Simple. You see how the atoms they're arranged differently. So this is what stereoisomers is now like i said we don't we, when, we're, when we're doing problems we don't say that hey these two guys are stereoisomers because stereoisomer is more of a umbrella term right it's a bigger term therefore we classify things as either enantiomers or uh, diastereomers so stereoisomers only what you need to know is that they differ from conformational isomers and constitutional right in in the fact that we have same molecules, right? But the difference comes in how those atoms are arranged, right? This this right here, this methyl group, it's it's a wedge, so it's pointing in front of you, right? Um, actually, wait, what? Uh, that should be switched. Yeah, I did that. I just realized what I did right here. This should be the Br, and that should be the CH3. So yeah, if you look at these two molecules right in here. In here, the methyl group, it's pointing towards you, right, because it's a wedge. And in this example right here, the BR is the wedge, so the BR is pointing towards you. So you see how this differentiates from conformation and constitutional isomers. Now, like I told you, stereoisomers is more, it's a, a bigger term, right? And we don't categorize things as, we don't really say this. these are stereoisomers, but rather we like to use, talk about enantiomers or diastereomers so let's go to enantiomers and I think this is the one that like most a lot of people enantiomers and diastereomers that most people really get confused with so a few facts before I show you guys an example enantiomers think of mirror images mirror images right also because they're <coughs> 
they're in antimer, you have to know if two molecules, right? If we're going to consider them in antimers, then they should have opposite configurations, right? In all their chiral centers. Opposite configurations, right? In all chiral centers. And what I mean by configurations, I'm talking about you know RNS configurations. So if two molecules, right? If they have let me you know let me draw an example. So this will make a battery. Stop recording. Oh no I didn't. Cool. Wow, this I'm already going off for 15 minutes. Um all right, um, yeah, let me try to run run through this really quickly. So, in antimers, let me give you an example. You know, I'll cut this, right after this, I'll cut this video short and I'll continue it. So, say we have a molecule like this. Then we have a wedge. Br, Br, OH, OH, and a hydrogen. Now, if you look at these two molecules, right, what do you notice? You notice that if you basically were to take, um, take a mirror, right, these guys are mirror images of each other, right? Basically, it's like the same thing, same molecule, but kind of, you can say they're like flipped. Um, that's that and then the second part is they have opposite configuration in all their chiral centers so you have all this you know you have a chiral center over here another chiral center over here right and then over here over here and what you notice is that what do you call it that these are these are enantiomers because if we were to do the RNS configuration right if you were to do the configurations for these chiral centers you'll find out that if this is a R if this is a R then this will be a S this will be a S basically opposites right that these chiral centers right will be opposite configurations if these guys are this is a R and S this will be a S and R basically opposites so th that's what uh, an antimer is you have mirror images right and they differ, they have opposite configurations in all their chiral centers, right? So they have opposite configuration in all their chiral centers. Now, the next thing, the next one that I'm going to talk about is diastereomers, where, and that's basically where, um, well, actually, one more thing I forgot to mention. Even though, you know, you can do this the long way and find, you know, find the whole RNS configuration, then you'll see that that what do you call it this molecule and this molecule they have complete opposite configurations in all their chiral centers but you can just you know look at it and say look these are all wedges right and these are all dashes so you know obviously these guys are opposites so therefore these are enantiomers um in the next video i'll talk about the diastereomers and basically diastereomers instead of having you know um they're going to be non mirror images that's all and the other difference is they're going to have opposite configurations, not in all of them, but at least one or more. So again, there'll be non-mirror images. I'm talking about diastereomers now, right? Diastereomers, they're going to have non-mirror images, and they're going to have opposite configuration, not in all, but one or a few. Um, so I'll continue this in the, I'll talk about diastereomers in the next video.